Good day. My name is Brad Caleb, PhD. And by now you should know that my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. I continue to work for the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. For many, many decades, although I was raised a Christian, went to Christian schools, Bible schools, seminary, preached for 12 years in, in prison, I was a prodigal son. Folks, I don't care what name you carry, what credentials you have before your name. If you are not following the way, you have to really listen carefully, because this is important. Let's continue. Seeking the Father's heart, the kingdom with the king. And Jeshua was on this earth around 30 AD. He talked about and shared a parable about the prodigal son. Two sons were living with the father and one was always doing exactly what he needed to do. The other, he was typical of a person that just couldn't care less. He just had wanted to do his way. And so he went and the story continues that the son ended up taking his inheritance screwing it up, losing everything, and ending up in a pigsty. Folks, that is exactly what happened to me. I had everything, and I ended up in jail. Maximum security, wondering how in the world did I ever get here. Now, you don't have to get to jail if you want to pay attention. Look, a true Israelite, and John 1.47. Yeshua HaMashiach, most of you know him by Jesus. He walked on this earth and taught the first disciples. When I say the first disciples, I mean the first century disciples. They were mostly Essenes from a tribe that was very serious in following the word of God. They sacrificed a lot to celebrate the law of God and to honor God. So when Jesus showed them how they as the poor could become one with the Father, they recognized that was very important. So most, most Bible translations, they sound just about the same. I checked a few and I ended up with the Jewish Bible. Yeshua saw Nathaniel coming toward him and remarked about him. Here is a true son of Jerusalem, or Israel, sorry. Here is a true son of Israel. Nothing falls in him. Nathaniel was an Israelite indeed. And what does that mean? As a Jewish person, the Apostle Paul was keen for his people and honest people, so much so that occasionally he would be cursed him he would curse himself almost. He would say he would say that he would be cursed if he could lead them and to get saved in Romans 9, 1 through 5. Paul had a deep affection for Israel and explained what a true Israelite was. His explanation is, no one is a Jew who is merely one outwardly, nor is circumcised outward and physical, but a Jew is one inwardly, and circumcision is a matter of the heart by the spirit, not by the letter in Romans 2. Verse 28 to 29. Wow. I hear something that is really remarkable. I learned Romans when I was a little kid. Sunday school, Sabbath school, and later on, seminary, Bible school. Clarifying the uncertainty is not what you are on the outside, but what you are to yourself. Are you seeking after God? Maybe you go to church and at a glance it looks like you are going to church, yet you are a far cry from God. You see, a true Israelite is one who beyond doubt seeks God. A person that loves God seeks God. None of us can rest in what we have achieved in the flesh. It doesn't matter who I am, what I have done. If I lead a big church, wow. I'm in trouble because first of all, you're responsible for what you teach. And second of all, 
who tells you that you ought to be there. Nathaniel was sincere in his desire to find and follow the truth. Folks, we are talking about the truth, a truth that most people don't recognize anymore because it hasn't been preached since 325 AD. So we're talking here about Yeshua, also known as Jesus. He did not say that Nathaniel was a guiltless man. He says that Nathaniel was a man with no deceit or deception, no pretense, no deceitfulness. He was the real deal. He is someone searching for the truth. So what we're looking for is someone searching for the truth. I don't need a perfect person. I don't care that you have been in jail. I don't care that whatever you've done in your life, because God doesn't care. You are at the point that you acknowledge that you are the prodigal son. Whatever brought you to that level is immaterial. Now, thank God that you came to your senses. That's my friend, that is very important. And I hope that that will sink in. Again, as Jesus saw Nathaniel coming toward him, he said, here is truly an Israelite. There is nothing false, no deceit, no guile in him. Remember that Jesus was very upset with the Pharisees because they had everything to go to the promised land to meet a restorative justice and to be with God. And he stopped themselves and they stopped the people. And he said something, you are from the synagogue of Satan. And my friend, I want you to be very cautious. Listen careful. Are you or do you belong to the synagogue or the church of Satan that's praying, having crosses, having all kinds of stuff that God never wanted? He wanted you to follow the way, the truth and the light. For there is only one God, Abba, Father. And we pray it so often because we know the Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Uh-oh. Do I have to continue, my friend? Maybe you remember that I mentioned that I try to make a video one a day. And it does take some time. So I'm usually looking and continually looking for material and there was something that i needed to explain restorative justice in a different way and i heard sid roth when i heard him with the following statement he introduced his guest as a prophet and hearing that introduction i realized that the body of christ's fixation with the elections and particularly with the re-election of trump it is scary. What is the body of Christ that is supposed to seek the way, the truth and the light doing with a man of Trump? I'm not commenting on the prophet's statements. When Trump gets re-elected, he will be confirmed to have foretold Trump's re-election success. What did concern me though is the misunderstanding still floating around the body of Christ enabling Trump. Let me clarify. And I'm talking about the family of God, those that are searching for the truth, not a religion, but the Father, the Creator, Abba. We talked about the mishap and the failure in paradise with Adam and Eve, their lockdown out of heaven. I explained uh, as they got off out of the presence of the Lord, it was not the lockdown out of heaven, it was the lockdown out of paradise. They were no longer allowed to be in the presence of the Lord God Almighty. And it felt like everything was lost. God created Adam and Eve physically, mentally and spiritually. And when they physically acknowledged each other, they talked with God, they walked with God in the garden and it was beautiful. And there are so many songs written about it that is just incredible. But when they sided with the fallen angel, Lucifer, Satan, both Adam and Eve believed that they would be like God, because that is what Satan had presented. Both Satan and Adam and Eve did not realize that God automatically 
and he cannot be associated with darkness. Everything contrary to what God said. In other words, God is light, and if there is darkness in us, we cannot be together with light. So they had to be blocked from the tree of life. So they locked out, they got locked out of paradise. But paradise was God, the life of God. That is what caused us to live forever. And when Adam and Eve sided with Satan, are we siding with Satan? Are we choosing for Satan to be re-elected? A man that lies, that steals, that, that just does whatever a person that should be a leader not should do? I'm not criticizing Trump, I'm only acknowledging what he does. First century believers were introduced to restorative justice by Jesua. Something else took place, and most of us failed to see that. Jesua shared a parable, a story, to make it a little easier to understand about the prodigal son, and we're talking about several brothers. We always assumed that there was one with the Lord and another one that left him. We took and we looked at the spiritual aspect of Jesus' message. But most people hear the story. But the message that he shared with the followers was addressed to a lot of the Essenes. Those were people that were steeped into Jesus' descriptions. They were hungry. They wanted the presence of the Lord. And they were following him from a long distance because they were focused on getting to know the Lord. They were never called Christians because there were no Christians when Jesus was around. They were followers of the way, the truth and the light. And when Jesua broke the barrier of the restorative justice and Satan that screwed up Adam and Eve's future to live in the presence of God forever got restored. So Satan had basically caused Adam and Eve to struggle, to fall down on the face. God had to save them. And in order to save them, he had to split with them and say, sorry, you go your own way, till restorative justice was done. And there was one man, and his name was Jesua, HaMashiach. You know him as Jesus, who was the way, the truth, and the light. And God was very impressed with him. And as Jesua said, I am going to the Father, your Father. He is my brother. Jesua is my brother. So when I googled up, who is Sid Roth, several other people questioned this before me. And does he teach the truth? And that was asked in Yahoo Answer Online a few years ago. So I got a response from somebody, and her name is Elizabeth. She claimed that he arose out of the New Age doctrines. This is Sid introducing a prophet. And it's always important to know where the prophet is coming from. And he brings many of those hearsays with him. When he teaches how to know God, he tells people that God will come and live on the inside of them when he repeats a little prayer, whether they believe that prayer or not. He does not preach the gospel. He teaches goats how to act a little bit like a sheep. He also promotes a rising new hearsay called soaking, announced as a sort of prayer meeting where individuals pray or med meditate together and they get closer to God. Well, both my Jewish brother and my Christian prophet misunderstood the story of Jesua. I am not debating whether Roth is on the right, Sid Roth is on the right side or not. I'm only sharing with you him as a Jew claiming to follow Jesua and the Christian prophets pro profiting and giving word that President Trump will be re-elected because he is the man and God has a special plan and he will destroy whatever is going to be destroyed. Both of them don't recognize that Yeshua was talking about all of us, whether we are Jewish, Muslim, Christian, Buddhist, 
we are all prodigal sons and each one for ourselves have to come to the Lord and say, Father, forgive me. And then we have to follow the path. It's not just me saying, oh, praise the Lord, I'm done. Sorry, your cookie is finished. It is not just saying a little prayer. It is a commitment, my friend. It is following the Lord. I am decided to follow Jesua, the way, the truth, and the light. He is my brother. He left a path for me. That is what I'm doing. I am committed. And if my Jewish brother states a different, I'm sorry. See, the problem with us is that the body of Christ has been told a sorry as story. In 325 AD, Jesua HaMashiach got killed again because everything that was at that time following the way and the path got destroyed or they wanted to kill them or they threw him in the arena if you did not choose life with the emperor of rome uh-oh complete different story that is how christianity was born so christianity started off right and satan again what he did in paradise are you sure psst, psst. they did it again when the first century believers followed jesua they were on the right track but when they started following the Roman Catholic Church, my friend, they went off track. And when you call yourself a Protestant or a born-again believer, and it's all based on the same teachings, I tell you, we all have to repent. It took me seven decades to figure this out. I was a prodigal son. I'm not a Christian. I'm a prodigal son that Turn back to the Father. I'm following the path. I'm on that path and I invite you. Come with me. And there is an invitation. There is an RSVP. In other words, you have to respond that you want to be at that wedding. El Shaddai, God Almighty, invited you and me. But we got to come as the prodigal son and or daughter. Not as a supersonic Christian that can talk in tongues and do whatever you have done because that all matters nothing, folks. It's me and my house. We shall serve the Lord. And I love to see you there as well. We have to follow. That means we have to walk that path. We have to learn to walk in the Spirit. And it is a far cry from promoting Mr. Trump. For that part, it is your own free will. You can do whatever you want. But please, tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. This is hopefully some food for thought. Prayer Caleb, PhD. And you know by now that my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger, and I continue to work on that foundation for the prodigal son and daughter so that they can build a solid future on rock a solid foundation god bless you bye for now
Thank you.